In this video, I'm going to be really honest with you and I'm going to show you the 10 most annoying things about working with Elementor Pro. There are some things that just need to be fixed and some features that just should be there. And don't get me wrong, I love Elementor and I do not want to switch page builders. So Elementor, if you're watching this video, please take this video seriously and then we're all happy. These are not huge things, but they're very essential. Let's get started. So the first thing that I just don't understand about Elementor is why after all these years they only have one kind of hamburger icon you can choose when you are creating a mobile menu. Like why is it that nowhere here I can change the style of the toggle button? I only have this rounded a hamburger and a cross but not every website has a rounded corners design i want to be able to to at least have a few options here where i can choose uh the toggle button or the hamburger icon for the people that don't know this is called a hamburger icon because it kind of looks like a hamburger but i want to be able at least to have like a few options here and what would be even better if I would just have an option to upload my own SVG for the normal state and then the active state like this. It's a simple thing, but it frustrates me. Okay, the next one. This one is also unbelievable. Okay, so when you have a cool header like this with a background and you have a text, you want to make that text readable. So then they have this great option over here and it's called a background overlay. And over here you can add a gradient that goes from black to transparency. So you can make the text more readable like this. But then if you want to go to mobile, you click over here, you go to responsive mode, and then normally you would be able to set up different settings for your mobile phone. Over here, that is not possible. So when you're gonna change it over here to make it readable on mobile, something like this, increase the opacity maybe a little bit, you know, you want different settings for your mobile. So maybe something like this right? That would be great on mobile. And then you go back to your desktop and then it applies also on your desktop. So why are there no settings here for the different uh, mobile tablet and desktop? I just don't understand it. So what I had to do is on the final website, what I did is I just didn't even use this background overlay feature. What I did is I went in Photoshop and I created three images with the shadows inside of the JPEGs. But <laughs> that just means that this feature is actually unusable. So why is it even there for hero sections like this? So I just don't understand why Friday responsive features are not here. Just give me them and then I don't have to go in Photoshop all the time for the different images. So let me show you. So here you can see it. I have three different images, but this of course also makes the website slower because those are three different JPEGs. Okay, now this one. This one, I just don't understand. This is a feature request. I just don't understand why it's here because with Elementor, you can build dynamic websites. You know, they have this cool dynamic tag icon so you can load in any content that you want from here, right? But the most used situation is that you have a custom post type or for example, something simple like this, a blog, where you want to load in your dynamic posts, right? So, or maybe your portfolio item that you created with a custom post type plugin, like custom post type UI or Jet Engine. So you want to be able to have your own design in here because in my design file, this is what I wanted to create. So the categories on top, then a title, then a normal text, and then a read more button. Shouldn't be that hard, but in Elementor it is for some reason. It's not even possible to create a simple design like this because all you have is just the post widget where you can just uh, d uh, delete a few things, uh, maybe delete the read more. Uh, you cannot even add categories on top. So this post widget is kind of useless. So Crocoblock has a great solution for this, but it's a whole plugin, right? You have to pay extra for it, but there's also a free plugin that you can just download. It's called Elementor Custom Skin. And when you have this, then inside of the page builder, you will get this feature. It's called Loop. Here it's called Loop. In another plugin, it's called uh, Listing. It's the same thing. But here you can create your own listing template. So your own block with dynamic data, which you can then use on a big page. So you can you create one of those blocks with all the elements that you have inside of Elementor. And then you can say like, hey, I wanna use this design with the post widget. 
And that's actually all. This is not really hard, I think, to create, but it's so essential. So let's say that I have a website like this that doesn't have a blog, but it has a list with properties, right? You're not gonna create uh, new pages for every property. You're gonna use a custom post type. And then you wanna be able to have your own design. It's not here. So come on Elementor, give us a listing or a loop feature so we can actually bring our designs to life with dynamic content. I think something that's really essential. So let's say that you don't wanna pay extra for another plugin, uh, for example, CrocoBlock, where you have the cool listing uh, uh, widget, right? Maybe you don't have a, a big budget. So you just use the, the free plugin Elementor custom skin, right? So you have that loop. Well then, if you wanna use that, it's possible, but there's a problem. Because with the normal post widget, you can, if you have Elementor custom skin, now uh, import that new cool uh, loop, right? That is cool, but that's not made by Elementor. So then you have your custom design over here, but then if you wanna change the column gap for mobile, it's not possible. Well, it is possible, but then it also applies for desktop. Why are there no responsive options here? Because on mobile, you have a different design than on your desktop, especially when you have two columns on mobile. Maybe you have a small logo list. Well, the spacing on mobile is different than it is on your big desktop. So why is it not here? This has nothing to do with the dynamic content. This is something that should be here in the post widget, even if you don't even use the cool uh, Elementor custom skin plugin. Just give us three options here with mobile, desktop, and a tablet. So let's say that Elementor is gonna create that custom loop or listing feature. Then I wanna ask for one more widget, and that is an excerpt widget with the possibility to edit the length. Because right now that's not possible, it just shows the whole excerpt on this blog post, for example, it's small, but on some blog posts, for example, uh, let's say that you have a blog post that has a longer excerpt, then of course it will mess up your design because this is gonna be really long and then your whole list is gonna look like a mess. So you wanna be able to change the length of the excerpt that is shown here in the same way as they already have that feature over here in their post widget. So. If Elementor is gonna create a loop or listing feature, please add this feature to the already existing post excerpt widget. All right, okay, this one is also interesting. So Elementor has introduced the new form and the form has now steps. So you can add steps to your form, pretty cool. So when people fill in over here, they click on next and they go to step two, then they fill in this and they go to the, the next step, right? So you can have different steps now in your form. But what if you wanna change, uh, uh, let's say page two. So you are just working on step two, page two of this form, and you're just uh, changing a few things over here. So let's say I'm gonna open the second question. I'm gonna delete the point over here. You saw it? When I change something, it switched back to step one. Like why? Like I'm working on step two, so I'm gonna change something else. For example, this question, I'm gonna delete this letter, and now it's back to step one. Like why? I was working on step two. Like keep me on step two. <laughs> I just don't get why it's constantly switched back to step one. It's just, it's just a small thing, but it's frustrating, especially when you have a lot of questions in a form. Okay, this one also is just, it's unbelievable. So you're working with columns a lot of times inside of a design and you also have your grid and 1140 is the width of every elemental website so that means from here from the logo to the actual end of the website so every column i should say so every main section like the main container is 1140 perfect right because then i know how to create a design but then what happens a lot of times is that you have different columns and you want the same spacing in between that's what you want so you create a section like this with a few columns and then you can define over here what the gap is between the columns. But there are two problems over here. First of all, the naming, like, come on, white, wider, narrow, like, what is this? <laughs> I have a design and I just uh, wanna be able to set up like, hey, five pixels, 10, 15, 20, 25, something like that. Like that is something that designers use. Like this is so amateur over here. I just don't get it. So let's say that you wanna have like uh, this on extended. Extended is um, less wide than white and also less wide than wider. <laughs> but still, it's not aligned to the grid because the grid 
is over here and here's also space so then it's not aligned and what do you need to do well there is not an option in here because this is the gap on the inside but let's say that i want the same spacing between all of them but i also want to align it to the grid how am i gonna do that at this point you really have to to grab your calculator and just go in here and not even use padding because if you're going to use padding for example over here that doesn't work so you need to you need to add margin over here you can use 10 on the right you can use 10 here 10 here but you can't use 10 here and then this block is bigger than those three so what i want over here is just a few presets so five pixels 10 pixels and i know you can set it up over here with custom but then still if you put in 10 it's still on the outside so i want to be able to align it to the grid i don't know if if it's easily possible and i know with that with some numbers you won't get the perfect alignment because i don't think it's impossible in math to do that perfectly but even if it's like 90 and then 20 that's better than grabbing your calculator and trying to make uh, the spacing the same so please come up with something that's a little bit easier. I get that this is not a super easy thing to implement from a math standpoint, but this is 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 not very nice, what, what we have right now. In your site settings, which are, by the way, an amazing feature, also a must have that they have right now. I love it. So you can set up your main colors, your main fonts, so you don't have to change the fonts in every single widget amazing right so your typography over here your global font your global colors i use this all the time it makes my life so much easier uh, if you don't use the site settings yet make sure you watch a tutorial on it because it's it's just amazing but just give me a few more options for the buttons because over here they say buttons but it's actually not buttons it's button there is no uh, buttons over here you can only set up one button style but on a website like this look at this this is not very weird you have a normal button which is you know the green one you have another colored button but on a lot of websites you also have a secondary button so an outline one because in a lot of designs uh, not all the buttons are the same right you have buttons that are more important which are filled solid and you have buttons that are less important uh, and should attract less attention like these outline buttons so why are there no two or three options here to add different buttons because in a good design you just don't have one button for the whole website okay this one is also really interesting um, you have a header like this with a logo, a menu, and some social media icons. And you want to create a header for your mobile, right? So you go into your header template and you have your logo on here. You have your menu in a different column. And then, of course, social media icons in a column. But on mobile, you almost always want the hamburger icon on the right. And then maybe the social media icons over here. How are you going to do that? Well... There are some features where you can switch the columns on mobile, but if you have three or let's say two or more columns, so three or four, then what are you going to do? Because if you switch it, then the logo uh, becomes on the right. So what you then have to do is uh, duplicate the whole menu and then change up the columns over here like you want it. So for example, like this, you know, and then design it like this. And then you have to turn this off on desktop and turn this off on mobile. But I mean, that creates more code. It makes your website probably a little bit slower and it's not a very nice workflow. So what I want is just very simple. If you go over here and you go over advanced and then responsive, I wanna be able to say like, hey, on, on desktop column one stays in one, then two goes to three and then three goes to two. That's what I want because then you will have, uh, you don't need to create two menus for every single website that has more than a logo and a menu, uh, which a lot of websites have. I hope that this one is possible because that would really make our life a little bit easier. Okay, and now one that I think also a lot of people want, and that is to make whole columns clickable. Uh, and I don't even know if this is possible and if it's easy to do, but that would be nice because in a lot of designs you have different columns and you want to link those different columns to different sections or different pages 
instead of clicking on every individual widget and then going in and see if there's a link in there, right? Or only link the button. For example, in a website like this, where you have a custom design for your post, like now I can only make the title link and uh, maybe this one, but not like the whole image. And you wanna make it easier for your users. So, so just give it the option to, you know, link this whole column uh, to a specific page. And I think that would be really nice uh, also for the user experience, people that use that website, but also for us as designers and, uh, you know, uh, starting developers that use uh, Elementor. Uh, I think that will be a pretty good feature uh, just from a user experience perspective, because for the user, it's just much nicer if they can click over here and go to the actual posts or, for example, like this, to different pages. Okay, guys, so... Ah, this, is, this was a, a nice video to make. Finally, some frustration about the tool I love to use and I use every day, but there are some things that I just need to change. So let's hope that they will implement a few of these features. Uh, I know there's also a GitHub where a lot of people also have a feature request, but these are just some of the things that, that I run into, which I think are so essential. And if you have things that you find frustrating about Elementor, put them in the comments and maybe I can make uh, an extra video like this with more points. So maybe we can then, you know, as a community show elements are like, hey, this is what we care about. And this is really important to us instead of focusing on new, new cool features, right? And, and for me, you know, it's also about making good business decisions because sometimes Elementor introduces a new feature and it's, it's such a cool feature, but if you don't fix these simple things like this, then then where are your priorities, right? And, uh, you know, I know in, in big companies, you have different teams that work on different projects, but, you know, it's, it's the responsibility of the boss to, to say like, hey, you know, uh, we're not gonna focus on new cool features uh, this uh, half year. We're gonna focus on fixing the essential part first. And, and not all of the things in this video are essential, but there are some things that I think are just big mistakes that they should fix. I, I really hope that a lot of people uh, like this video. <laughs> that was a very cheesy way to ask for likes, but <laughs> it's, I really hope because I, I love to use this tool and I don't want to switch uh, page builders because there is no other page builder that has the functionality that, ha uh, that Elementor has. So <laughs> this was a this was a big video for me to make. I'm happy that I made it. It's my most honest review I think I've ever done. Uh, even though it's not a real review, it's just a list of things that, that frustrate me. Uh, I hope that you also liked this video. Uh, show your support in the comments, and then uh, hopefully we will see some of these features in the future in Elementor. Thanks, guys, and uh, I will see you in the next video on living with pixels.